Okay, so we're going to continue our work on Module 2 on our commercial restaurant building. And for this assignment, we're going to be doing uh, a series of sections and details. I'm not going to go into all of the little detail how to do everything. I'm basically going to go over a few key aspects uh, so that you can complete this assignment that we may have not have done already. Um, much of the of the section details um, are very similar to our foundation details assignment previously in this semester. We'll be adding uh, three new sections or details to our model. So let's get that taken care of first. I've actually already created some of these sections previously and I do believe a lot of you have done that as well. If you haven't, on the first floor plan create a wall section here and this one's easier to figure out on the second floor plan and actually it shouldn't really be showing up on the first floor plan is this wall section here through our wall at the patio and finally our third detail is a structural detail so what we would like to do is go to the second floor framing plan which is a, one of our structural drawings and we are going to be placing another wall section here so go to the section button make sure that your type is wall section not building section and we're going to place one through here as well now you'll notice I've just created this one here if I go back to the second floor plan I don't have another section here because I did that on a structural plan where my discipline um, is structural this is now a structural detail it will show up differently in the model so the first thing that we're gonna focus on is this section here at our patio so if you're not sure what section this is to find in your project browser you can always click the section head or sorry double click the section head and it takes you to that section so the first thing I always like to do for the section is change the scale so that it looks correct. Change the detail level. We'll use fine here because this is going to be three quarter inch scale and modify it. We don't need to see anything from the first floor and we're going to drop down there. So there's a few things that we have to do here. You'll notice that the column line right now as we have previously drawn this is going right through our wall and if we get some structure in here that's going to interfere with this so we need to adjust this wall placement some in addition to the wall placement we have to upgrade this beam and add another beam up here this beam here is a w24 by 62 or at least that's what it's supposed to be so we do not have that currently loaded, so you'll have to load that and change its type. So I've loaded that and replaced that. You can see it's a bit deeper. Now we have to add the beam up here. Now, typically the way that we add beams is through a roof framing plan. We don't have one of those, so we have to create it first. You could do this on the roof plan, um, but the best way to do this is, is to create a framing plan. So we are going to go to View, Plan Views, and we're going to do a structural plan and we're going to do that at the roof level hit OK and we have a new structural roof plan the only problem is when we do it that way it its discipline is automatically architectural so we want to set this to structural and it'll hide most elements and because we're not actually printing this we don't really have to worry about too much about how this looks. So what we want to do is create a 21 by 48 beam that goes through here. But we don't know what height that is yet, so let's go back to our section. And well, we know that it's going to be at the bottom of this roof slab. So we can the way I'm going to do this is just copy this down with the control drag and we're going to call this top of steel roof and we can simply align it to the bottom of 
our roof deck. We can also just hide this. We don't need this in this view because this is an architectural section that's a structural uh, level. So hide and view by element. Now we can go to our roof framing plan, structure, beam, it's a 21 by 48. The reference level is top of steel roof, and we are going to place that from column to column. We can go back to our section and we can see that there. And it does not seem, no matter how much I change that, it doesn't seem to actually f do the correct reference plane. So I can see why some of my students were having that issue. So let's edit the work plane and change it here. Hit OK. OK, so I just investigated why that's been happening, and I think I, I know. Uh, but it seems to be a glitch in Revit. When I set that up, I set my reference level here to be top of steel roof. So that's the correct level that it should be referenced at. However, here in my options bar, it's still saying level roof. Typically, when you change a reference level in your instance properties in the properties palette, it automatically changes that here in the options, but it is not doing that for some reason. So make sure that you do that in your options bar and change that to top of steel roof, and then it will place and it will be placed in the proper location. That's the first time I noticed that happening. So as I noted, this is, this is not good. We don't want our wall to be going through our structure. Okay, so we need to do some adjusting to this wall. Uh, we're going to start by going back to the third, sorry, the 3D view. And that is this wall here. We actually want to create a new wall type for all of these walls that are above this curtain wall. So we're going to do that by going to Edit Type and Duplicate. We're going to leave it called Metal Stud 3. Hit OK. And now these are separate from all of our other wall types. We can go back to our section. What we need to do to get our dimensions to work out properly is, well, let's first adjust this wall. So we're, or its placement, I should say. From the column line to the face of the brick is 1 foot 6. So we can put a dimension in and then use that dimension to drive the location of that wall. We can do a dimension from the face of stud to the column line, and that's incorrect. We need to fix the airspace in this wall so that we get one foot. We're going to edit type, edit the structure. We're going to make this one and one eighth of an inch airspace. Hit OK, hit OK, and now that says one foot. So we just simply reduce the airspace in this wall. This curtain wall needs to be adjusted as well, and we are going to do that with a dimension from the face of the storefront to the column line. Now, because that doesn't go to this center line, of the curtain wall, you cannot drive the location of this curtain wall using this dimension. So you can drag it and move that dimension, or you can nudge it, or you can do the math to figure out what the difference from the center line is to the face, which is two and a half inches, and from here to here is one foot two. You would come back one foot two and a half. I don't like doing math all that much, so I will often just nudge it until it's in place. There we go, one foot two. That's what we want. When I say nudge, I'm using the um, keyboard arrow keys to move that in small increments. The, the closer you zoom in, the smaller the increment gets. The further you move out, the bigger it gets. So those walls are now located properly. Because of that, we have to adjust our floors. So to do that, you need to edit the boundary, and you can only do that in a plan. So we're going to go to the second floor plan, 
and now we can adjust the edge of that using the align tool should align that slab edge to the front face of that storefront curtain wall. Go back to your section and that's there. We have to do the same for here, so we're going to do the same thing. Edit boundary, go to the second fl floor plan, and align to that same boundary. Hit the green check mark, say no, go to section one, and now everything is lined up properly. The rest of this section is pretty much annotating it with the correct dimensions, the correct notes, some a few detail items, changing the um, wall sweeps, or I should say adding the wall sweeps to this section of wall according to our instructions. And, and that section is relatively finished once you do all that. The one thing I would like to show you how to do that's, that's somewhat new is we're showing tapered insulation on this roof. And to do that, we're going to go to our roof plan, not our roof framing, but our roof plan. And we're going to overlay a new roof on top of our roof deck. So we're going to go to architecture, roof, by footprint. And we're actually going to change to a steel truss roof, not because we have a steel, not because we're using that, but because it has a, a lot of the elements that we want later, so we can change that later. And then we're going to pick lines. I'm going to pick the edge of these parapets and then this wall here and then I can trim the corner all of these lines to get a continuous boundary. I'm going to hit the check mark and go back to my section view. Now this is not correct. I'm going to have to edit this. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to get rid of steel truss. I'm going to call it insulation EPDM. I'm going to edit my structure. Uh, this structure I can delete. I only need one layer of structure. My rigid insulation I can delete. And here I'm actually going to change my structure to rigid insulation. We're essentially creating a roof on top of a roof, so we don't actually have any structure, but you can't create a roof without structure. So we're putting, we're making the rigid insulation the structure. We're going to call that four inches thick, which is the minimum we need on this tapered roof. The rest of this is fine. Roofing EPDM quarter inch. It's good to go. Hit OK. And now you can see that we basically have just created rigid insulation with an EPDM membrane over top of that. In the next video, I'm going to show how you modify this roof structure so that it tapers and drains to a, a roof drain.